Hey guys, it's Henry from Mowers and Blowers. So I uh, was wondering why this thing didn't start, you know, um, except when I put, um, it's a new carburetor, you know, until I put uh, sprayed, I stuck a little bit of uh, carb cleaner into the carburetor and it starts up and runs great and all that stuff. But uh, it just, you know, didn't start. I, I was, you know, wondering what it was and I thought maybe it might be, you know, the solen the fuel solenoid. So after doing a bunch of research and stuff, I was watching, you know, some videos and uh, I forgot that Kohler it has the uh, magneto upside down, you know? They, they always have that uh, kill tab on the top where the words are, whereas Briggs and Stratton, Tecumseh, they're all on the bottom. So out of force of habit, I put the magneto on that way with the tab on the bottom. So I'm thinking that has something to do with the reason why it didn't start. Um, but I'm a little perplexed as to why it ran fine. You know, obviously it's getting, it's generating some type of spark, you know what I'm saying, to uh, maintain the engine running. And why does it just run when I spray fluid in there? You know, so that doesn't really make any sense. But I'm going to take this cowling off and put the uh, magneto on the way it's supposed to be. Uh, Kohler seems to be the only uh, magneto that you have to put on with the words and the tab on the top as opposed to the bottom. I will say there's one good thing about the um, Kohler's is that um, the top engine cover doesn't have bolts in the front. It has only four bolts on the top so that you can just go boom, 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 and take them off, as opposed to others where they have one in here and there, you know, and that kind of pain to take out, you know. You gotta remove the hood sometimes just to get that out, which is stupid. So I'm glad that people actually think of, you know, the engineers and people who, who make these things, uh, actually think about, you know, people working on them. So easy, four bolts. After you took off the, uh... Cletus, you dipstick! Oh, there it is, right here, see? So, uh... Yeah, this is, it's backwards, see? I have the, uh... I have the kill switch on the bottom. It should be like, like that, you know? So it's, um couple of Allen keys and uh, remove it. Oh, it's much better. Turn the lights on. <laughs> so I removed the uh, two Allen keys, right? So I'm just going to flip this upside down, just like that. You know what I'm saying? So now I'll just put the uh, two Allen bolts back in here again. Just hand tighten them just to keep it in place because we're going to have to do that calibration again. And the calibration or the measurement is the, um, the old business card in the Magneto flywheel trick. So uh, you want to turn the flywheel to where the magnet is. And there it is right there. And it should suck it right in there. Watch. Now you're getting some resistance. You want to put it exactly centered. It's about right. So now you slip a just your regular business card in there. No, I'm not giving this guy free advertising. Here, let me put the camera down for a sec. So you just put the business card in between there, right? It's about like. 0 0.04 thousandths, you know, about something like that. You can put a feeler gauge in there if you want to, but the business card is much easier. Now, you don't want to over tighten these things, man, because uh, you bust it. You bust that nut, or <laughs> bust a nut. You bust that screw, and you're screwed. I mean, because this thing is attached to the engine block, you know what I mean? If you crack that or something like that. <laughs> You're in a world of hurt. Anyway, that ought to do it, you know. Now you just rotate the flywheel and get your business card back if you want it.
or if you want to start, you better take the business card out. I'm going to put the engine cover back on again. Okay. Son of a... There, that's it. Now I'm gonna give it a try. All right, full choke. The plot thickens. Well, maybe it is the solenoid. Super odd, man. Well, at least we know the magneto is on correctly. Or is it? It's obviously not getting any fuel, so I just removed the uh, air cleaner cover. And there's the air cleaner. You know what? I'm going to try it now and see if it's just the air cleaner. All right, so it wasn't that. It still won't start. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to clamp off the uh, fuel. All right. And I'm going to take that uh, damn solenoid off. Actually, right now I'm going to test it with uh, I'm going to just shoot some carb cleaner in there. Just a stash. Like that. Alright? I'm going to see if it starts. Alright, so you know it's not getting fuel. That damn solenoid. You know, you really don't need the damn solenoid, you know. It's just there for uh, anti-backfire, you know what I'm saying? And it could cause a lot of problems. Not to mention the fact that it's expensive, too. So, uh, I'm going to remove that solenoid and uh, test and see if it's more working, you know what I'm saying? So now I just clamped off the uh, fuel line. And i um, already loosened this with a bolt with a uh, wrench. And look, there's fuel, man. I feel... Look at that, it's full. Drippage. So there's the solenoid right there, right? Here, watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the key. You can see what it does. See? It goes in, out. In, out. So, it's in the bowl. It's full of gas. You do that and um, it should start. You know what I'm saying? Uh, fuel is being allowed in and uh, it should work. So why doesn't it start? I don't understand it. So I uh, took one of those Briggs & Stratton uh, carburetor bowls, the one that has the uh, indentation in it that goes in, you know, and that bolt, it actually fits perfectly on this uh, Kohler carb, right? Uh, and just tighten it. So now there is no solenoid, okay? So now it runs just like, it, now it works, should work just like a regular carburetor, you know what I'm saying, with no solenoid. And so I'm gonna give this a try. So that, see this solenoid is just sitting here, you know? I can actually disconnect it if I want to. Oops. Hope I didn't break it. Things expensive. Anyway, so I'm so there's no solenoid. It's just a regular bowl with a nut that works and fits. And I just uh, took the clamp off, so it's not leaking. I'm gonna give it a try now. There we go. 
here's my uh, box of carburetors, right? And I took one that I had that was here. Oh, here, here's one. Here, look. This is a Briggs carb. You know, I think off of a uh, push mower or something like that, you know? And this is the this is the bowl that has the indentation on it. And that accompanying bolt with the gasket on there, this fits perfectly on there. You know what I'm saying? So if you guys wanted to delete your solenoid because you're having starting problems, this thing's very expensive, at least OEM one is, right? And uh, I know that still works, so I'll probably end up selling that on eBay too, you know? Uh, I'm just going to tuck this wire somewhere, you know, like zip tie it somewhere uh, so it doesn't get in the way. But, uh, yeah. Um, hey, look, it starts now. That's basically what you want, right, is that it starts. And doesn't leak. So I'm good, you know. It starts, and I'm going to worry about that damn solenoid. So I put the magneto back on correctly. Not that it made any difference, apparently, you know. And uh, I deleted the solenoid. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. <laughs>